So ladies and gentlemen, this player could have been easily on the higher echelon of goaltenders for uh, the NHL in the 1970s, but due to an unforeseen uh, set of circumstances, he was mired in uh, with two of the worst, uh, what do you call, uh, defenses of the era, Toronto's in the mid-70s and the Colorado Rockies of the late 70s, because he was having a, a difficult opportunity really a reestablishing career after his major time with Philadelphia came to an end. So today we're going to be talking about the curious case of Doug Favell. Now Douglas Robert Favell uh, uh, played uh, the majority of his professional sporting career as a goalie, but it was also a noted box lacrosse player, very hard sport. Now he played in the NHL, like I said, for the Flyers, the Leafs, and the Rockies. Now Favell, along with future Flyers teammate Barty Parra, Played his junior hockey for the Niagara Falls Flyers in the OHA. After the club won the Memorial Cup in '65, both goalies began their professional key careers in the Boston organization, who held their rights. Over the next two seasons, Favell played in the Bruins farm system. Now, Favell, like uh, Tony Esposito, was one of the few goaltenders then to employ the now popular butterfly style, often going down to uh, on the ice to block shots in an era where stand-up dominated. Now, with the arrival of the six NHL uh, expansion teams in 67-68, Favell and Perron were selected by the Flyers in the expansion draft. The goalie split the work that first season and led the Flyers to a first-place finish in the NHL's Western Division. Now, Favell had a stellar 2.27 goals against average with four shutouts, and uh, both goalies played for the Flyers until Perron was dealt to the Maple Leafs in February 71, which we talk about in the two-part uh, Bernie Par- Parant podcast in this channel. Now, with Parant, the Favelle became the Flyers' workhorse goalie. He recorded seasons of 44, 54, and 44 games, with goals against average of less than 2.85 for all uh, three campaigns. Now, what was really interesting with Favelle, he was the starting goal- goaltender in the Flyers' semifinal uh uh, birth in the Frozen Four against the Montreal Canadiens where the Flyers won the first game and then only lost the next four. But he had a strong 2.60 average in, in that campaign. Now, uh, uh, he appeared uh, in those 11 games. Again, CBC gave him a lot of coverage saying he was kind of the future of the Flyers. He had no indication at the time that Bernie Parent was going to come back from the Blazers and be traded actually by the Leafs. Uh, I mean, uh, traded by the Flyers uh, to the Leafs to get uh, Perron's uh, uh, rights. Now, the Leafs at the time had three veteran goalies on their roster, but Favelle played the most games in the regular season in the playoffs. He recorded a strong win-loss record and a solid 2.71 goals against in 32 games. Now, the following season saw the Leafs rely on only two goalies, but Favelle struggled, uh, struggled in 39 games with the worst uh, goals against average of his career at 4.05. Uh, his third season with the team was his last, with uh, only three games played and extended time in injury list. Now, Favell's NHL rights were sold to the Colorado Rockies for the 76-77 season. After appearing in 30 games that year, Favell became the Rockies' top goalie the following year, uh, skating at 58 games and leading the team into the playoffs. His final NHL season saw him appear in only seven games, and he finished the season with the Philadelphia Firebirds of the AHL. Now, Colorado exposed him in the 79 expansion draft. Now, he was taken by the Edmonton Oilers, but opted to retire instead of start fresh with a new franchise, which I, th- which I think was a mistake, but that's just me. Now, Favelle holds the distinction of being the only player selected in both the 67 and 79 NHL expansion drafts. Now, Favelle was known for an abruptly curved blo- blocker paid pad on his bl- stick hand, while Bruins goaltender Jerry Cheevers, Favelle's, uh, Favelle, Favelle's Goaltending partner for the Oklahoma City Blazers, that was the first goaltender to have artwork on his mask. Favelle was the first to use a painted design just before Halloween of 1970. Now, talking about his lacrosse years, he played professionally for the Detroit Olympics of the National Lacrosse Association in '68 and the Philadelphia Wings of the National Lacrosse League in '74. Favelle was also inducted in the Ontario Lacrosse Hall of Fame in 2005 because of his efforts going on and off the ice off the court, excuse me, towards uh, lacrosse. So total total NHL stats, 373 games, 123 wins, 153 losses, 
69 times, 18 shutouts, 3.17. Playoffs, 6 and 15, 12, 65, and uh, one shutout. And just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that playoff run in 1973, again, getting uh, the Flyers to the semifinal round against Montreal. And uh, be noted, there is a uh, playoff card featuring Favelle in the 73-74 uh, set, one of the nicest uh, cards of the era. So that's the story of Doug Favelle, and I wanted to do this just as a sideline to the Perron ones. Uh, I don't think Favelle got enough of a respect from the media because both of the teams he played for had uh, poor defense. But uh, with a better offense uh, in front of him, like he had with the Flyers in 73, which was his breakthrough year because he won 20, only lost 15 games in 44 uh, contests. He uh, he was uh, he he was uh, the Brian Hayward of his era. If he had a good number one augmenting him, he would have been tremendous for the long run. But I think the Flyers made the right choice to go for Perron and trade him because you can't have Perron and uh, uh, Favelle in the same team because they both need to play. They have to have their bad games or their bad periods to make their, uh, their style work. So, thanks for listening. Bye.